Now I wanted to discuss how long it takes a deer to get used to you when you're hunting. And I see this comment a lot. We had a video about when should you be out on your land or when should you stay off your land. You know, we, we talk about just real quick with that, that you should stay off your land or give the deer the appearance you're staying off your land during hunting season. If so many people flip it around, they say, well, I'm going to stay off my land in the off season. They don't get used to no one being there. And then you pressure your food plots, your tree stands, your water holes, your access routes during the hunting season, and you spook all those deer off. So you need to flip it, make the deer think that you're not on their land. But when it comes to deer getting used to you, when do they get used to you? You know, out in the ag fields. Um, farmer drives by, they're working in the ag fields, they're harvesting crops. Deer get used to that. I, I would agree that that's something that they get used to. Um, you at your house, if you have deer that live nearby, they get used to the sounds of you at the house, noise, bouncing basketball, mowing the lawn, whatever it is. They get used to that. They get used to a road and they use, get used to that road noise going by. Now get used to, what does that mean? Well, for one, it means that the deer that are in that location tolerate your sound in that location. What I find is does, fawns, especially younger does, mutton buck that's kicked out of the herd and he's fawn buck, he's wandering around by himself, they can take a lot. They get used to a lot, but are they really getting used to you? Mature buck, on the other hand, he doesn't tolerate much at all. So what those lesser deer in experience wise or age, does and fawns, you know, does and fawns are just as wise or a doe is just as wise as intelligence, the intelligence level as a mature buck. The difference is does and fawns, and this is why bucks get used to you less than a doe and a fawn. A doe thinks in herd mentality. They rely on everybody else all around them. So when one runs, they all run. They might not even herd the sound, they just run. That's a little bit different. That's like the wildebeest jump, jumping into the river and crocodile takes out a percentage of them. That's doe family groups. They think in herd mentality. They think and act as a group. A mature buck, he's become mature and all his friends keep dying until he's by himself a lot of times. He's the oldest buck in the neighborhood. It doesn't matter if he's three year olds or, or seven years old at that point, but he's gotten used to living and getting to that point because he is an independent thinker and he makes a decision as one, he has to rely on himself. And when a mature buck relies on himself to make decisions, he becomes a very hard animal to kill. He becomes very easy to pattern because you know he's gonna do the same thing, but to actually go in in his world and think that he's gonna get used to your scent, your sound, your sight, he's not going to. He's not going to do so. And I, I often talk about like when it comes to ATVs, the does and fawns are the great deceivers. They, they deceive you because you drive by and they stand up and watch you and you think, oh, they don't mind ATVs. They don't mind this car going by. Yeah, they don't mind that. But in all this, they're not getting used to you. They pattern you. And that's a big, big difference. They pattern you. So when they see you drive by in an ATV, they have already patterned you to know that you're just driving by. Now, mature buck, he wouldn't tolerate that. He's gone 400 yards before then. How many times have you seen the oldest buck in the neighborhood just stand up? Maybe it does, you've seen it once in your lifetime, once a, a year, but you don't regularly drive by and see the older bucks unless you live in a completely unpressured state. Some of the fantasy land states, like a Kansas, for example, where there's 20 some thousand bow hunters, 30,000 bow hunters compared to Michigan, it was over 400,000 at one time. Even Illinois had over 200,000 bow hunters at one time. When you get in those really low pressure states, what they do is not what other deer do, but you drive by those does and fawns stand up and they pattern you because they know that you're just gonna keep driving by. Try stopping the machine and opening the door and see what they do. They run because they've patterned you that you're just gonna drive by. Now that doesn't mean a buck is going to tolerate that. So when it comes to hunting, and when it comes to moving about your land, I want deer to get used to, yeah, I'm driving on the property during the summertime. I don't want you feeding here, living here. Yeah, if you do, that's fine. I want you here during the fall because that's when I can actually manage a herd. You're not managing a herd in the off season. You're managing it during the hunting season. That's when you can work on buck age structure, promote sex ratios, work on populations, maintain and balance with the habitat. That all happens during the fall, during hunting season, not in the off season. You're doing a great job attracting deer, deer during the summer. That means you're probably doing a bad job at actually building a herd, building a quality herd, building a quality hunt, probably all the reasons you bought the land. So what does it take for deer to not get used to you? you know, again, they. They don't get used to you. They pattern you. So how do you take them patterning you 
out of the hunt so you can actually have a great hunt. This location is a good example of that. When I say these examples, I want you to apply these concepts to your land no matter where a whitetail roams. I point this out because this is a non-deer area. If you look up here, you look at this grassy area, it doesn't matter if this is flat or it's super steep like it is right here. You can see how steep this is. Look at right here. Even walking up here in the morning, if I were to go hunting up here, we'd have to put ropes and steps into this location. It's super steep. I don't know if the camera's gonna give you that, that, uh, that reflection of how super steep it actually is. This is a good example. We also have a house right down there. You can see our neighbor's van or, or vehicle, a FedEx delivery, is going to our neighbor's house down there. We don't expect deer to, to be in this area right here. We don't expect it because there's not deer habitat. We put the road in here. We're not adding any cover to this area. We're not making bedding areas. And so that's a way that I make sure the deer don't get used to me and don't pattern me, is I walk in an area like this where I don't expect deer to be. And then I walk to a point where I expect them to be, and that's where I hunt, I, I, I walk no further. This is a cool spot too, because we have a stand up top here. We come into it a different way during the dark, where we get away, from, get away with it. And then when I actually sit in that stand and I want to get out, I come down this non-deer approach. Because the way we switch back in and hunt to a stand right up here, and I have stands, it doesn't matter if it's flat land, what state it's in, you can walk in the woods in the morning sometimes, even near bedding areas because the deer aren't there yet, based on where your food plots are, where the food sources are, where the neighbor's ag fields or not are at, then you know you can get it. We, we did that on public land this year. I apologize for cutting in the video. I'll try to keep this 20 seconds or less, but we're thinking about planting and so is Lincoln at Packer Max. And right now he doesn't offer very many deals. It's $50 off. Check out the code WHS50. It's in the link in the description. Try them, great product, check it out, you won't be sorry. Dylan and I walked back, and, and Jen, um, I forget, Dylan, how long was that taking us to get back there? An hour and 15 minutes, yeah. or an hour somewhere? Yeah, right there. And we walked, um, and I know the first day it was about two hours, but we're walking about uh, 900 foot change in elevation overall. We get back into that location, now we can start hearing the boats coming in by the reservoir, people parking on the outside, and we're in the middle of there just sitting waiting. We shoot a nice buck. It's on public land, same thing. You're trying to get into an area that you don't expect the deer, then they can't pattern you. In this case, we can actually hunt up top and then walk down the point in a non-deer area and get out this way, even though we wouldn't go in this way. But it works out really well because then we don't have to spook deer around that, that uh, stand location. And every stand location you hunt, doesn't matter if it's on public or private land, think of all the different ways you can make sure that deer don't pattern you. You can see right here, we've actually planted these trails. We keep them mowed. You can see right here, it's our grass mix right here. And we planted this because we want this to be short grasses. We don't want it coming up against our legs. When you have brush and briars and sticks that hit your legs, it actually holds scent. So that's one way, scent. We don't want the deer. We're not blowing our scent towards bedding areas on the way in. You have to be not just, yeah, I don't blow my scent into this area when I'm on stand. And don't ever think you're gonna spray something, use a machine, it's gonna hide your scent. For a mature deer, again, some of the inexperienced little ones, you know, young ones might be okay with that. But for a wise old mature buck, we call them one sense creatures, meaning that they need to see you, hear you, or smell you one time and they're gone. A little button buck that's wandering around because he's kicking out of the herd, he needs to hear you, see you, or smell you, and then he goes, three cents. Different than a mature doe, that might be more two cents, they're gonna stomp at you, they already see you, they're gonna get downwind of you, smell you, and then they take off. Accessing, scent is one thing, we don't want them seeing us. So when we come through here, they're not gonna see us coming out, they're not gonna see us going in that way under the cover of darkness, they could see us coming out the other way. So you think about that, you might go in one direction, come out a completely other direction, but you have to apply this to every single stand location. Because it doesn't matter if it's a public land and you value the area you hunt, or private land. Now, if you're just hunting the public land for a week, get more invasive as you go on. That's okay, you're gonna be there for a week, you're not back till next year, you're not preserving that hunt. But for most of us that hunt private land or public land, you have to think about your future hunts. That's why I say private land is a lot harder to hunt than public land. We just show up at public land, go shoot something. You just gotta know what you're doing then. I'm not saying it's that easy, but if you're an experienced hunter and you're in a location where you've scouted, you can actually have an idea where the deer move, 
you show up and you shoot something and go home. There's no work. You're not planning for next week, next month, or three months from now and preserving your hunt. But if you live by public land, you're hunting all the time, if you hunt private land all the time, you have to preserve those future hunts. And that means the deer not ever getting used to you, or let's change that phrase, I like patterning you where you hunt. You let them pattern you by them seeing you, hearing you, or smelling you. Take those out of the hunt, actually ambush your hunts, ambush your stands, get to those locations, and then you're gonna have a great hunt. You have to do that. Don't ever fall into the mindset or the trap that deer get used to you, and, uh, and, and they, they'll tolerate that ATV, they'll tolerate you being sloppy going in and out, they'll tolerate the noise, the, the creak of your stand, you walking by and waving at them, yeah, they might tolerate that to a certain extent. The older bucks don't, but as soon as you change that, they're gone. And that's why you ride the ATVs, you walk, you do all the stuff in the off season. You can't think that's gonna continue during the season because they really don't get used to you. They just patterning you. They're patterning you. They're getting to know you. And they can pattern you a lot better than we can pattern them. They live out here 365. And for those reasons, always hunt like a predator don't ever fall into the trap the deer get used to you they just pattern you and if you take that approach you can never go wrong and you'll have a better hunt and a great hunt for the rest of your life